Oh, hey, it's great to see you. Should we grab a coffee? Hey guys, we are going to be answering some questions so you can get to know Kase and myself a little bit better. So Kase, it's a really beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah, wonderful day. So what would a perfect day look like for you? Sun, friends, mm. and laughter. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Definitely a night owl. Mm. Do you like tea or coffee in the morning? Coffee. What are you enjoying the most about Brazil? Everything, sun, friendly people, just great atmosphere. And if someone from our audience were to visit Cape Town, what activities would you recommend they do or places they see? We have great beaches and beautiful nature, so you get to see like wonderful animals and yeah, it's just a spectacular place to see nature. Mm -hmm. What's the next place you want to travel to? Uh, I would love to visit Mexico. Mm -hmm. And what's the next country you would like to live in if you got the chance? Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> and what's one thing that you'd say you can't live without? Coffee. Mm. What's your favorite social media? Instagram. And how and when can real life first meet you on social media? Every Wednesday live on Instagram at reallife.english. Okay, my turn. Mm -hmm. So, would you rather live without the internet or without traveling for a year? I'd have to say without the internet. Mm. And what's your favorite channel to watch on YouTube? Mm, I really like Matt Devella. What do you spend most of your time doing online? Working. <laughs> favorite activity to unwind after a long day of war? That's a good question. Usually walking Phoebe, my dog. Mm, okay, nice. Do you prefer reading physical books or ebooks? Ebooks, definitely. And what's the last book you read? It's called Hyperfocus. Favorite country you've lived in? Ooh, probably, you know, Barcelona, where I currently live. Best food you've ever eaten? Ooh, paella. And one thing people should definitely try out or see while in the U.S. In the U.S., I'd say going to California. And one myth about living abroad? That it's easy. <laughs> So Nia is actually waiting for us with some of your guys' questions. So you want to head over and go see her? Sure. Let's do it. Oh, hey, Nia. It's good to see you. Nice to see you again. Hey, guys. Nice to see you. Are you ready for the learner's questions? Yeah. Sure. All right. What type of coffee were you having back there? I take my coffee black, no sugar. I had a latte. Mm. What's your favorite comfort food? Ice cream. Mm, pizza. All right, now into English. How long have you been a teacher? I've been a teacher for three years. I've been for 10 years. Oh, wow. What motivates you to teach English? Because I love traveling, meeting people from all different cultures, and I love giving other people the opportunity to do the same. I love meeting people from diverse backgrounds and I love giving people the opportunity to improve their lives. Oh, nice. Should learners study grammar? I think that they should, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the only thing you're focused on. You don't necessarily need to do it early either. I agree. I think grammar is very important to learn. I, I don't think it's the most important thing though. So, mm. yeah. Right. What are the two most common mistakes people make in English? Ooh, that's a good question. I think one of the biggest mistakes that learners make is just being so focused on needing to get rid of their accent when really as long as people can understand you, you have intelligibility, having an accent is perfectly fine. Yeah, I think the same but for grammar. I think sometimes people get caught up on, you know, setting grammar rules and you know, as long as you know people understand and you're able to communicate, I think you're you're doing a great job. Mm. And what should they do if they make a mistake while speaking in English? I think like first of all don't apologize I think a lot of learners they they'll just say oh sorry for my bad English but don't need to you know you're in a learning process just keep up the good work I think it's important to you know recognize that mistakes are part of the learning mm -hmm. process and yeah you should just keep going you know recognize that it's a mistake and learn from it and how can learners improve their pronunciation I think that listening practice is 
very important for improving your pronunciation. So the more you listen, the better your pronunciation will become. Yeah, that's a great tip. And I'd say too, just get in the practice of imitating. Should learners choose one variant of English, like American, British, or South African? It's their choice, I think. Mm -hmm. Whatever you choose, if you want to sound more American, that's perfectly okay. It can be good to have some exposure to all the different accents, but yeah, I'd say whatever <laughs> you enjoy, definitely go for that one. Yeah. First step to make learning English a habit. Download the Real Life app. Yeah, you could listen to a weekly podcast for just 10 minutes. Have a short four minute conversation. Oh, this is an English related question. <laughs> How do you pronounce these words? Often, root, almond. Often, route, almond. Right. What's the difference between in the end and at the end? Well, that's a tricky one, do you know? Yeah. I guess oh. at the end of the road or at the end of the day. So it's the... It's kind of talking about like a single point, point right? Of, of something yeah. that's the finality of it. Exactly. In the end would be like, I don't know, in the end of the story, the couple gets together and they live exactly. happily ever after. Yeah. Good. What's the difference between watch, look, and see? Watch, I think of as like something that you're actively watching, like that you're not really breaking eye contact. For example, you might watch a sport or you might watch TV. Look is like you're taking one look at something, like look at this. Yeah. And see. Seeing something is, I guess. The sense, right? The sense, yeah. yeah. I'm able to see or I'm not. No, a blind person's not able, able to, to see. see. Yeah. Right. How to address a group of people if the plural of you is you? Well, it depends where you're at, actually, if that's true or not, because, uh, for example, I was just in Texas over New Year's and they would say you all or even y'all. Yeah, definitely you all. Um, I think that we also use that when we address a group of people. Mm -hmm. Definitely you all. Okay, grammar rapid fire from a learner. Oh, no. <laughs> How do I know when to use the past simple or the present perfect? It's a little bit complex, but there's like a rule of thumb that most of the times will work. Uh, when something begins in the past and then continues up until now, you use the present perfect. So, for example, I've been in Brazil for two weeks. That means that I'm still in Brazil. But something that used the past tense is already finished. So, you know, next week I'll be saying I was in Brazil for two weeks. Yeah. It's all exactly right. that. <laughs> all right. Let's see. A slang word you use all the time. Kwai. Mm. Mm. It's a South African. <laughs> What does it mean? <laughs> it's a South African phrase that means that something's really great. It's like, oh, you can use kwai for, you know, when you when something's amazing. It's like, oh, that's a kwai pair of shoes you have on. I think I don't use much slang because I usually speak English with learners. <laughs> All right, the F bomb now. <laughs> fuck up versus fuck off. Well, fuck up uh, would refer to, it could be a person, someone could be a fuck up, <laughs> or they could, that fuck up could fuck up. So. If you fuck up, you're making a mis you make you've made a mistake, mm -hmm. or you've done something wrong, or if you're a fuck up, you're you you generally tend to make bad decisions or mistakes. Yeah, and fuck off is like a really emphatic, really rude way of telling someone like you know fuck off, get away from me. Or you could, if you don't believe someone, you could also say like you know fuck off. That's not there's no way that's true. Is it okay to use those two phrasal verbs with the F word? Yeah, why not? It uh, depends who you're talking to, for sure. Don't use it with your boss <laughs> or grandma. No, we sometimes use different words to describe different things. In your opinion, Kasse, which is the weirdest word South Africans use? I would say braai. We say braai for barbecue. So um, yeah, it's basically the exact same thing as a barbecue, but we use the word braai. Mm. What about you, Ethan? Which is the weirdest one Americans use? Mm. Do you have any ideas? No, I don't actually. Trying to think like with British American English, there's some that uh, like make no sense in American. I'm not sure the weirdest, but definitely one weird from the west of the States. We could say howdy for hi, if you want to sound a little bit like a cowboy. I'm going to hand this over back to you, uh, Cassie. It was nice talking to you guys. See Great you later, Nia. <laughs>I've never been in a pool before. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. No, I, I was in a pool uh, last week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let me hand this to you to ask the first question. Okay, so what does it mean when South Africans say lack of? 
I have heard this one before, and it sounds very similar to Lecha in German, mm -hmm. which means delicious, but I think you use it for like great, awesome, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, how about you? All right, the next one. Yeah. What does it mean when I say something is dank? Does it mean like something's bad? Like it's a bad situation? Actually, it's very similar to Lecha because you can use it for something that's delicious. You can use it for something that's great. Only those situations? Mm. Okay. Favorite tongue twister in English? Oh, I always have trouble remembering them, but uh, I like the Betty Butter bought a bit of bitter butter, but the butter was too bitter, so <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that was quite good. Mm. Okay. All right, your favorite idiom in English? Uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. That is a good one. Like, you know, visual kind of idiom. What is your favorite word in English? Hmm. I like awesome. I use that all the time as an American. Yeah, yeah that's quite <laughs> Or an ricochet. American. That's another good one. Yeah. How many languages do you speak? I speak two and a half. I speak English, Afrikaans, and I've been learning Portuguese. You're getting better yeah. in your Portuguese here. Right. All right, so I have some special questions for you. What's the most difficult word to pronounce in Afrikaans? Um, <laughs> Ooh, what is, what's your favorite word in Afrikaans? Wunderluck. Mm. What's the next language that you'd like to learn? Um, I'd like to learn Spanish. Mm. Okay, what's your favorite place in Barcelona? Ooh, that's a good question. I always like getting good things to eat. One of my favorite restaurants is called Els Cuatro Gats. Mm. Mm. A trip to the mountains or a day at the beach? Day at the beach. First word you learned in Catalan. Am I saying that right? That's all yeah. I'm saying. The first word I learned, uh, testimo, which means I love you. Oh, great. That's <laughs> What's your favorite word? In Catalan. In Catalan. Yeah. My favorite word. Um, probably the same one, testimo, or gos, because it's a dog. Ah, mm. you have a dog, right? I have a dog, yeah, mm -hmm. which I like to say testimo to her. <laughs> and what's the most difficult language for you to learn? The most difficult. Uh, to date, I learned Hebrew for a little bit. That was very challenging. So if you were to write a book, what would it be about? I'd probably write a book about diversity in South Africa. Oh, cool. If you were to give a TED talk, what would it be about? Mm, that's a good question. I think I'd do it probably on the topic of something having to do with learning. Like for example, what I was saying before about not needing to worry so much about your accent. So have you met anyone famous? No, unfortunately not. not. Yeah. Me neither, not yet. I'm still hoping in Barcelona to run into to Shakira and Piquet. Yeah, mm. I want to run into John Mayer. There you go. Me too. <laughs> what famous person would you like to have dinner with? Hmm. Maybe I should have dinner with Jennifer Aniston so I can ask her to be on the show. Oh, awesome. <laughs> What's the best life advice that you've ever gotten? The best advice that I've been given is probably to just keep going. You know, don't stop when you fail. Just Keep trying. What is the one thing you wish you knew when you were younger? Oh, that's a good question. I think just accepting yourself, you know, just uh, learning to love yourself is really, really important. Uh, what would be the number one piece of advice that you would give to English learners? I would say don't focus so much on your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Try and focus on your progress. So if you're making progress in one way or another, like just focus on that. Mm, I love it. Same to you. What would you say is the number one piece of advice that you'd like to share with English learners? I've probably said a lot already, but yeah, I'd say maybe like you, just don't give up, just keep going. When you've fallen down, if you broke your habit, then just pick it up again. Don't beat yourself up. Great. All right, so how can learners get more of our lessons? Just hit the subscribe button and the bell down below and you won't miss a single lesson. Oh, someone's calling me. Let, me. let me see who it is. Oh, it's Max. Max! Oh. Hey, Max. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, How's Max. We're having a good time. Yeah. Hey, I have, a, I have a few questions from the community. Oh, amazing. All right, so first, why should people learn English? Oh, you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, I think people should learn English because it helps them you know, connect with the world, it helps them you know, expand their worldview mm. and their perceptions and their understanding. Yeah. Awesome. The next question is, what's unique about learning English with real life English? Ooh, that is a good question. I believe because you're not just learning English, you're really making English a part of your life. I like to think of it that we're not helping you to uh, study English or to learn English, but we're helping you to become an English speaker. All right. 
Okay, so I have another one. What is real life English's next goal? We've got a lot of them, but one of them right now is to bring more people to our app so that they can improve their listening and their speaking and really connect with people from all around the world. All right. So someone wrote, what's the biggest problems learners face when learning English? I think some of the biggest problems learners face is that they, they get really caught up in perfection. Mm. And they try to be perfect, and this becomes a demotivating, demot you know, situation where they just, you know, tend to give up after, you know, a few attempts. And yeah, this is this is one of the biggest challenges. I mm. think. Nice. And lastly, someone's interested in knowing where they can find more of our lessons. Well, they can find more of our lessons on our app, mm -hmm. on our real life English app. They can also find our podcast on the website. Mm -hmm. Instagram, as we Instagram. mentioned before. Yeah. We're everywhere. We're everywhere, yeah. <laughs> That's true. All over the place. All right, Max, great to see you. Thanks so much for, for giving us a call. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Bye. This has been like a really lovely afternoon. Thanks so much for coming over. It's been lovely being here. <laughs> and my last question definitely would have to be, should we do this again sometime? Yeah, what do you guys think? Should yeah. we? Comment down below, let us know. So yeah, we hope to see you again. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye. Pterodactyl. Yacht. Often. <laughs>